Jane's Exercise in Class August 31, 1971 Seth has gone into these coordination points and told, well, you don't know what they are, do you? No. Never mind. Okay. The experiment that I've got in mind is some more of this stuff going out the back, because I think we've done a great job of that, and I feel it's quite significant. Because we did it in a creative writing class without making any suggestions as to what we would meet, or rather than probable selves or anything, I'm going to suggest tonight that we do it with that in mind. Already I have the feeling, yeah, okay, so I ask everybody that wants to close your eyes, since that seems to be easiest. Hopefully, get comfortable. Those of you who are new, just consider it as an adventure in consciousness and see what you can do with it. We close our eyes simply because it's easier. I suggest that you close your eyes then. Those of you who are regular members of the class should have no difficulty in feeling that sensation that we get out of the back of our heads as if a pyramid were opening up. I would like all of you to give yourself full freedom as far as perception is concerned. If you feel this particular sensation in the back of your head, you can just follow it. If you don't, imagine the pyramid, the angle going out into a path that extends behind you. Those of you that have been involved in this before have simply to send your consciousness out through that pyramid so that it finds its own adventures. The others do this imaginatively. Imagine yourself walking out, perhaps as a miniature person, out of this pyramid. If you want you can stop and look back even, at the back of your head. I really believe, and most of the people in the class do, that there are dimensions of consciousness that are open to us if we only try. And that this is one. And that this particular journey of consciousness, we are leaving ourselves completely open to experience to whatever happens without making any demands or suggestions. Follow down the path then. If for you, the image becomes different or if you're doing your own thing, that's great, then follow it, and simply use my voice as a yardstick, as something to connect you to the room. Those who are following the pyramid will find hopefully, that they can travel down it easily, that it extends adjacently to our usual level of experience. There's a door at the other end and that it can be easily opened. If you find your consciousness aware of other things, then follow those things but allow it its natural freedom and use it. Unfocus your attention in the usual physical environment in which you are involved. Your consciousness is like a light for you to use. Then use it freely. Look in other areas of perception than those you usually pursue. You may perceive colors. You may see people. You may see a scene. You may simply be involved in kinetic sensation. But whatever it is follow it and allow yourself the freedom to do so. You may find that the pyramid itself changes its dimensions. There's a top that opens or a bottom that opens, or a room that opens from either side. Feel free to explore whatever you find. And by all means enjoy the feeling of your own consciousness as it does these things. Consciousness has a feel the same way that a body does. When you do different things with it, it feels differently. The feelings themselves can be clues, so that when you feel them again, they're familiar. Consciousness isn't solid, airy, distant thing that you just see through. It's an alive, vital part of us. It provides various kinds of sensation. It's free outside of the body, sometimes freer than it is inside the body. Therefore, let it find its own way in this experiment. Let it go wherever it wants. Give it the same kind of a freedom that you would if you were holding a flashlight and flashing it through a forest. You wouldn't say I'll only flash the light in this direction because it's a safe direction. You'd flash it all over so that you could see what was before you. Usually we just flash our consciousness in one direction and say this is real, but in this experiment at least, let us flash that light down that pyramid in whatever direction we choose. Open thresholds that we'll remember. If we feel new sensations or perceptions all the better. Realize, as best as you can individually, that you are not your consciousness. Your consciousness is yours for you to use. And use it gladly. Your consciousness is merely one more of your abilities. Give it freedom. Let it bring you clues as to the nature of reality. You don't have to make any judgments. This is like taking snapshots of a strange land. 
So don't make judgments from what you see, or what you hear, or what you feel. All I know, that within and beyond and through the world that we know, there are other levels of reality, other dimensions of activity, other psychological gestalts that we can explore. Allow yourself the full freedom to do this. I'm going to be quiet for a moment in which time you can explore what you are experiencing. And then use my voice as a cord to bring you back to your normal perception. But in the meantime, take advantage of the opportunity to allow your consciousness its freedom. begin to return. Begin to return your consciousness back down the pyramid to the room. The feeling connected with the back of your head should become stronger as you come back toward the self that you know, and the perceptions that are so familiar. Return gladly to the kind of perception that you always knew. Return to the body that is so secure and willing. Return gladly to the physical form that is a vehicle for your expression in this time and this place. Return to the time and the place gladly, the way someone returns to home, but knowing in the back of your mind that there are many homes and many places and many times, but for now return your focuses, settling back gladly into the body. The consciousness returning once again to the beautiful ivory bone skull, the eyes opening into the ordinary room. <laughs> 